Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WIPB-TV and Indiana Public Radio at Ball State University. Today we are chatting with Laura Janney, Executive Director of Muncie Outreach. Laura has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Laura, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's really important to talk about the mission of this organization and, and how it helps to strengthen civil society and generate understanding and acceptance uh, for people who are marginalized based on their orientation, their sexual orientation. Talk about the founding of the organization and the sensibility that you have invested into it. Well, it's founded um, basically because I have a gay kid. And when my kid, who's 28 now, when he was in high school, he had it really rough. Uh, he felt isolated and he felt like he was the only gay person in the world. And we used to travel to Indianapolis an hour away so he could uh, be with people like himself. Indiana Youth Group offers a safe space for LGBTQ kids. And, that, and traveling so far away is quite a hardship. So we decided to start a group here in Muncie and we provide um, safe spaces because I saw in my kid, the more he had a tribe with him, people like him, it took away his isolation and it built up his confidence and it made him more secure in who he was. And, and the, the issue that we face here as a society is that people are who they are. So how do we create a sense of understanding when so many of our traditional um, religious practices, our traditionalist ideas about uh, sexuality and orientation and, and um, what a, a male's role is and a female role, and, and, we're, and we have to look at those and really start to rethink how we view people who have a different way of being than, than perhaps I do or perhaps you do. It's really hard to educate people. Um, we're, Indiana is way behind other states, and we're in the Bible Belt, which makes it more difficult. But I think the, the thing that changes people the most is they, they love somebody who's gay, and they just are not tuned in right away. But we have more and more kids coming out now than ever before. And I think that changes hearts and minds. Um, but not always here in Indiana. There's a lot of negativity still, uh, especially around a re religion. And we have a lot of rural kids that come to us who uh, live in spaces that are all white, all straight, and all Christian. And they don't meet other people. They think that uh, they feel very isolated. Uh, they're very alone, and then they reach out to us or a similar group, and they find that there are a lot of people like them. How do you help children to, to navigate the fact that society will not necessarily accept who they are? Well, the kids know that right away. I mean, they, they realize it before they're even able to articulate who they are. They already feel it and know it because of uh, language around them, or our great leaders in this country who speak out against them, our churches. So they they have a good grasp on not being accepted. Parents are a little different um, because, and, and I know this is true of my husband and I, when you think with a heterosexual brain, you put a heterosexual life on your kid. Yes. You're not looking for them to be. Um, it's unconscious. It's not right. nefarious. It's just, it, it right. just is, it is, there are a set of assumptions that we, we have. And until those assumptions mm -hmm. are challenged, right. it's very difficult to think through what that, all the small things that, that we unconsciously do as parents. And, and mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're at fault for everything. For anyway. everything. Yes. Yep. But our kids are so much more than their gender and their sexual identity. They're, they're students and they're artists and they're musicians. There's so much more to concentrate on than that little tiny part. 
but it becomes a big deal because our society right now is very good at um, uh, pointing at them. And because I feel like as people, we need somebody to feel superior to. And so the gay community, I feel like they get a lot of uh, attention because because they're a minority and we could point a finger and say, well, we're not like them. What is the work that you do to promote that, that acceptance and also help these children to navigate situations where they might not be accepted? I think just acceptance, not necessarily that you need to understand, but just to accept. And uh, I think one of the biggest issues we have with our, some of our youth right now is um, being called by the right pronoun and a chosen name. Particularly for the, the trans transgender community. kids. And, and to me, it's not that difficult because you'll call somebody a nickname or you might call somebody by their middle name. So calling them by a chosen name should not be that hard, but it changes everything for that kid. If you are so concentrated on, if you, you feel like you present yourself as a boy and you are a boy and someone is calling you a feminine name, it, if you are so concentrated on being outed or looked at differently, then you're not performing in school. You're not doing what you need to do. And a simple, tiny thing like that can just make the world a difference. So uh, it's a small thing. It's a uh -huh. small thing, but the whole idea of respecting someone else's preference, right? respecting their desires, respecting who they are as a person, and trying not to get caught into the cliche is really important. But on the other hand, the person who is, is going to have to confront that, they have to be equipped mm -hmm. with the self-respect and the fortitude to not give up who they are. And it's rough, and that's why we do what we do. Um, because the suicide rate in Indiana, where Indiana's number 10 in the United States, and the attempted rate, the number of kids who attempt, Indiana's number one. So, and at, at attempts, I think Indiana, between the ages of 10 and 24, is at 19%, which is twice the national average. So it's important to me to have this group, to have a safe space. So a few hours a day, you are who you say you are. And it helps build confidence. So when they walk out of the room, they take just a little bit of that confidence with them. And then the next time they come, their confidence gets bigger and they take a little bit further out. And then that way it helps them uh, have to deal with people who are not going to accept them or may not want to call them the right name. They'll have more confidence and not care as much. Well, they're going to care, but it's not going to be a defeat. It's not going to be so crushing. So what you're saying is by building a community, mm -hmm. um, you're actually helping uh, these young people to equip themselves to navigate society, to create a mutual support group, to self-advocate to also uh, understand where there might be dangers that need to be either confronted or avoided. Yes. Attitudes that might need to be confronted or avoided. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're providing people with, a, with an amazing tool set. Talk about the actual programs and how you, do, how you pursue your work. Um, well, we have three different programs right now. Our biggest program is the youth group. It's 21 and under. Um, the kids come in and they do check-ins where they talk about themselves. And then we feed them. Most of our kids are food insecure. So they have a meal and then we send food home with them also. And then the programming is different. We like the kids to decide what we're doing. And we go between education and, and, and fun. Like they and may, social. And social. They may do karaoke one week or we may be providing sex education or coping skills uh, another week. Um, so we probably served 225 kids last year, and then our group averages around 30 each meeting. You have a couple of other groups. Uh, talk about those groups and, and, and its membership and, and what, those, what issues those groups deal with. Uh, we have a, a, a support group for parents that meets once a month. 
And it's for the parents of kids who, because when you first find out your kid's gay, you, it takes a while to process that. So they could come and talk to other parents who are going through the same thing. It's kind of like PFLAG. Um, so and then we have uh, another group. It's a transgender and non-binary um, support group. And that's open to all ages. And they meet every Tuesday. And it is a spot for people to meet other transgender people and help find resources and talk to each other. You had mentioned also that you uh, feed many of the te uh, many of the, uh, the young people in need, mm -hmm. um, and you have done a lot of work that is um, beyond what one would normally uh, associate with an LGBTQ um, uh, group. Talk about how this has affected your the personal lives, your personal life, of you, your son, your husband, uh, in terms of in terms of this connection to. When, when you got married, this was an unan unanticipated issue. You, it wasn't even on your radar. Uh, no, it wasn't it's amazing, on our... It's amazing how life gets hijacked <laughs> by God for, for these various, very mysterious purposes. Uh, yeah, it wasn't on our radar at all. Um, but the need is so strong here in this county, um, and it's hard to quit. I mean, when I got started, I didn't think I would still be doing this. Um, but it's such a passion. When you see a kid come in who's 13 years old and you ask them, what can we do for you? What do you need from us? And they tell you, I just, all I wanna know is if I'm gonna to live to see 20. It keeps you going and, it, and when you see the change in these kids and their leadership and how much they teach me, um, it just is such a big passion. So, but yeah, it's, it's taken over our lives, quite honestly. This is all we do. The world is changing and you're part of that change. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to be the change we want to see. If we're going to be compassionate to each other, uh, if we're going to build understanding, we have to step into places that uh, we don't know. We have to welcome the stranger from a strange land into our house. And we have to learn from that experience and try to understand that we too are in many respects strangers to others. So this, this idea of creating connection, creating safe spaces, creating interactions is such a powerful idea. Uh, Laura Johnny, thank you so much for sharing the stories of Muncie Outreach and thank you so much for your insights. Oh, thanks for having me.